Hey guys, so in this video, we are gonna be talking about charging speed or the lack thereof in my 2021 Toyota RAV4 Prime. So stay tuned. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be running a little bit of an experiment. I'm gonna be testing to see exactly how long it takes to recharge my 2021 Toyota RAV4 Prime. So far, it's been my biggest gripe about the car. Charging just takes too long. I think it's really ridiculous that Toyota put a 3.3 kilowatt charger in this car. I wish I had at least the 6.6 .6 that comes in the XSE, but they just didn't want to do that, I guess. The car is back home charging right now. I'm just running out with my wife's car to go pick up some dinner, and then I'll continue the filming of everything when I get back. For comparison, this 2014 Toyota RAV4 EV, which is made by Tesla, so it had all the Tesla components, has a 10 kilowatt charger. So this car that is much older has a much, much faster charger. And it's just disappointing because this car charges so fast. Yeah, we love it. But that's why it's my biggest gripe with my RAV4 Prime. The car was totally empty. I used up all the electric range. Of course, there's still a little bit left in there because I use it for the hybrid powertrain. So there is a buffer on the top and bottom side. I don't know exactly what it is yet, but I drained it as far as I could. And now we're fully charging it and we'll just have to see how long it takes. So stay tuned. Hey guys, so as of right now, we are three hours into this charging session. I started this session at 4.10 p.m. and it is now seven o'clock. I'll spin the camera around and I'll show you what my EVSE says, the commonly called a wall charger, even though it's not a wall charger, but that's for a different conversation. But I'll show you what that display says because that has a kilowatt hour counter on it. And then I'll show you what the display says in the car. So you'd think, three hours would be more than half. We'll know at the end if it's half or not, but I'll spin it around now and I'll show you guys where I'm at. So here's my setup here. I tried running the GoPro to do like a whole time lapse, but it used up a ton of memory just letting it go. So I might try to include some of that, we'll see. But here's what the meter says right now. Oh, it's down to 6.8, 9.9. I have noticed that jump around quite a bit. I don't know, I'm talking about the amperage in the top right corner. I don't know why that jumps around so much, but the car does it. So the car is requesting a certain amount of power and yeah, I don't know why the car is varying the speed so much. Earlier today, I saw it go all the way down to zero, wait for maybe five seconds and then started climbing back up again. I don't know. So on the bottom left corner is how much power has gone into the RAV4 Prime. You can see we're almost to 8,000 watt hours, which would obviously equal eight kilowatt hours. And being an 18 kilowatt hour battery pack, you can see how this is still taking a while. We're not even to the halfway point yet, according to the power that's gotten into the car. So now we'll go check out the car and I'll show you what the display says out there. All right, so here we are inside the car. Oh, I hate how you have to have all doors closed in order for it to show you any info. 
but it shows you the info when you first open the door. Uh, this thing, it kind of drives me crazy with the doors. It won't start if the charging door is even just popped open a little bit. I don't know, it just seems like I'm always closing doors when I'm working on something or testing something and I want to start the car. It's a pain in my butt. But I do have a future video that's going to be coming out of everything I love and everything I dislike about the car so far. I don't want to use the word hate because there's really nothing I hate with this car. It's just some weird little frustrations. But anyways, uh, let me, I just have to hit this door button here so it shows me the info. So here we are three hours in it charging and it says we still have two hours and 20 minutes. Uh, let me hit the button again. Okay, door is, come on, there we go. Okay, so that's how far we are. On this graph, if you only are counting the green part, then we are a little over halfway. If you're counting the whole thing, this thing should be damn well almost full and we only have eight kilowatt hours into it. So I don't really quite get what they're doing with all this yet, but either way, this is just gonna be a test of how long it takes to charge this car. But I'll continue on and update you guys as it gets more and more full. Hey guys, I'm back, still doing the test. Right now it is 8.10, so that marks four hours. I was just upstairs in my office reviewing the footage that I've already taken so far, and something really, really weird is going on. I don't know if it's the car, possibly my charger, but randomly the car would stop charging, it would go all the way down to zero for amperage, and then five, 10 minutes later, it would ramp up again and start charging again. I'm pretty sure it's not my EVSE, the open EVSE charger that I've showed you guys already. I don't think it could possibly be that because I've used it on so many other cars and I've never had an issue. We use it to charge my RAV4 EV all the time and it charges quickly. For example, and I know I throw a lot of numbers out there and I know not everybody maybe understands kilowatts, kilowatt hours, all that kind of stuff. Power is measured in kilowatts. So something could be six kilowatts, 10 kilowatts, whatever it is. That's how much power something has. Capacity is rated in kilowatt hours. So you have kilowatt hours going into a battery via kilowatts. <laughs> I know it's kind of crazy, kind of confusing. To add to that, my meter back here shows watt hours. So you just look at the number and usually people convert it over to kilowatt hours once the number gets higher over a thousand, couple thousand watts or something like that. But hopefully I didn't confuse you more but when you are looking at the display, to kind of put it in comparison, how slow this is charging compared to some other vehicles, this is pretty consistently, I think, tops out at like 15 amps, something like that. So really, really not very fast. My RAV4 EV charges at 40 amps. So it does get significantly faster when you have a larger onboard battery charger. That probably didn't help at all, but it's slow. Just, just, just trust me. It's charging slow, <laughs> but I'll spin the camera around. I'll show you where we're at right now for hour number four. I'll show you the EVSE and then I'll show you the dash inside the car and see where we're at right now. We just hit 12 kilowatt hours. So it's still charging at 14.7 amps. The bottom right hand corner is a lifetime number. It's like a, consider it like an odometer in a car. It's how many kilowatt hours have gone through this charger. I've had it for quite a while. So the number is fairly high. So yeah, so we're at 12 kilowatt hours that have passed through this thing and gone into the car. So let's go check the car out and see what the car says. Okay, here we are inside the car. Just try to get it focused. There's a stupid door thing. One hour and 10 minutes is what it's saying. We still have left to go. Yeah, door, I know. So what I say, 12 kilowatt hours have gone into the battery and we still have an hour and 10 minutes left to charge. I'm very curious to see where this all ends up. Hopefully you guys are too, and it's still watching this. I'm not boring you guys to tears, but I'll update you guys an hour from now and we'll see where we are. All right, we're in the home stretch. Here it is 9.07 and it should be done shortly. <laughs> I've already snuck a peek at the car's dashboard and the display here behind me. And I'll show you that here in a second, 
but I wanted to briefly touch on why this matters. I know there's going to be some people out there who say it doesn't matter because it has a gas engine. But to people like me or other people who want to try to drive on renewable energy as much as possible or just electricity as much as possible, charging speed means a lot. Just picture this quickly. If you take off and run an errand or just go to the next town over and then come home in the morning, maybe your favorite coffee place is... 20 minutes away and you have to go over there, then you come back, but you have other errands, other stuff to do the rest of the day. You can't recharge fast enough to continue using electric only for the rest of the day. Now, a lot of you guys kind of know my history. I've been driving electric cars now for close to 10 years. I think it's eight or nine, something like that. So it was kind of a sacrifice going back to a gas car. I really said I never was going to, but after the beating I took from Tesla, I was pretty done and none of the other electric car companies had the infrastructure for me, which is really one of the biggest things when you do a lot of road trips or you like traveling. You have to have good infrastructure and Tesla had the best and I didn't want to settle for anything else because I've tried. I've tried taking a lot of road trips and they haven't all worked out very well. I have some older videos in my channel that aren't very good, but it shows me struggling trying to make trips with my Toyota RAV4 EV because that only would get 100 to 120 miles. Uh, I digress though. So back to the cars. It matters because if you have multiple trips you want to take in one day, you want it to recharge quicker so you can use more renewable power. Here at my house, we get 100% of our power from solar energy. I have 17 kilowatts of power and I have multiple Tesla batteries. I do have other playlists you can check out if you're curious about my home system. Uh, I think it's pretty cool, but I like to be able to charge at home with power that I made, power that I've already paid for because all the equipment is paid for. So I just prefer that. And with this car so far, you have one trip per day basically, because otherwise it's gotta come back home and you have to charge it for five to six hours and there goes pretty much your whole day. And unfortunately with winter time right around the corner, we're gonna get maybe five hours of daylight <laughs> here. Uh, it, gets, it gets pretty dark and gray. So that's the one thing so far that I am most disappointed for about this car. But like I said earlier, I do have other videos coming out with my everything I love and everything I dislike. We'll talk about that later. But this has been a, a long enough monologue. So I'll spin the camera around and show you guys what I'm seeing. Okay, so here we are at the display. And some of you guys who understand this stuff, you might notice right away in the top right corner, it's doing 3.3 amps. It's already tapered. So if you're not familiar with that, the quick explanation of what that means is each manufacturer chooses a battery charging curve. With all of these EV batteries, you can charge faster when the battery is fairly empty, up to maybe 40%. Then it starts to maybe taper a little bit. And as it gets more full, then it starts tapering even more. So you can see we're at 14 kilowatt hours and it's already at 3.3 amps. It is just trickling in. Oh, I think it just completed. 14 kilowatt hours is what went into this car. 14.39 kilowatt hours. Let's go check the car because uh, that means it's connected, but it's no longer charging. Yup. There it is, charging complete. Charge port lid is open. Yes, I know it's open. <laughs> oh my God, that's all oh, these notifications. So there you have it, there's the test. It's almost six hours exactly to the minute, which is pretty crazy. Uh, obviously it's a long time, but it's also pretty crazy. It's like to the minute, six hours. It's just a bummer it takes so long and holy cow, 14 kilowatt hours. The battery pack is supposed to be, I think I read 18.1 kilowatt hours. So that leaves maybe two kilowatt hours on the bottom, two kilowatt hours on the top. You guys probably have all left this video by now. But another thing that I forgot to mention is that there's of course losses as well. So this meter, that 14.36 kilowatt hours, whatever it was just now, that includes losses. So that's just what's traveled from the plug through that meter to the car. There's heat losses. There's also losses once it goes through the charger. The charger's not 100%. It's probably 92, 95% efficient, something like that. So in actuality, 
the power that it went to the battery inside this car, I don't know, I, without doing some math, I'm not sure, but it could be a, a kilowatt or something less. So there it is, not really good news, not really bad news, but just news nonetheless, I guess. But <laughs> thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next one.